In this video, we are going to talk about enteric fever, which is caused by Salmonella. Enteric fever is a foodborne disease. There are two types of enteric fever. They are typhoid fever and paratyphoid fever. Typhoid fever is caused by Salmonella typhi and paratyphoid fever is caused by Salmonella paratyphi A, Salmonella paratyphi B and by Salmonella paratyphi C. They belong to family Enterobacteriaceae and genus Salmonella. They are gram-negative bacilli. Salmonella is transmitted by consumption of undercooked or raw meat or food contaminated with infected animals or persons' feces. To contract enteric fever, a little bit larger infective dose of bacteria is required. It is like 10 to the power 6 bacterial cells. A large infective dose is required to overcome the stomach acid barrier and bile. The incubation period of the disease is about two weeks. Once the organism is ingested, it passes into the small intestine. Then it adheres to the small intestine via fimbriae and colonizes in the small intestine. It leads to degeneration of microvilli. Subsequently, it breaches the cell membrane and enters to the intestinal epithelial cells. Then the bacilli multiply intracellularly in the enterocytes as well as in the macrophages of the prayer's patches. Some bacteria penetrate into the submucosa and pass to the local mesenteric lymph nodes. Then from lymph nodes via the thoracic duct, they invade bloodstream. It is called primary bacteremia. Then after 7 to 10 days of the incubation period, bacilli enter reticuloendothelial system, including liver, spleen, bone marrow, and also they enter gallbladder and kidneys. After multiplication in these organs, bacilli pass into blood, causing a secondary massive bacteremia. It coincides with fever and other signs of clinical illness. From the gallbladder, further invasion of the intestine results. Involvement of prayer's patches and gut lymphoid tissue lead to an inflammatory reaction and infiltration with mononuclear cells which results in necrosis, sloughing and the formation of characteristic typhoid ulcers. Now let's look at about the clinical features of enteric fever. Early symptoms are dry cough, epistaxis associated with anorexia, headache, abdominal tenderness and discomfort. Diarrhea is uncommon and early in the illness, many patients complain of constipation. In the untreated cases, the temperature shows a step ladder rise over the first week of the illness. Then it remains high for 7 to 10 days and then falls during the third or fourth week. Physical signs include a relative bradycardia, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly and often a rash of rose spots. Rose spots are discrete, irregular, Blanching pink macules most often found in the front of the chest. So this marks the end of the video today. Hope you were able to get an idea about enteric fever. Hit the bell and subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching.